Welcome to the Aiki Dojo podcast. I am David Ito, Chief Instructor of the Aikido Center of Los Angeles. And with me is... Bill D'Angelo, Aikido Center of Los Angeles, Fourth Don. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Sensei. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah? yeah. I'll, I'll back back to the uh, daily grind after the holiday? Yeah, back to tw 2023. 2023. All right. Well, today we talked about, we would discuss or converse about the connection uh, between Aikido and spirituality. What is spirituality? So I, I brought with me a quote on definition. I looked it up uh, yesterday um, in uh, Webster's. And Webster's Online defines spirituality as the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to the material or physical things of the universe. And they give some examples of what a sentence might, how it might be used. And they said, one is, the shift in priorities allows us to embrace our spirituality in a more profound way. I'm not sure that sentence helps all that much. But, no. but the definition, I think, is a good definition. I think it's the common definition that spirituality is about the soul as opposed to the physical world. Well, I think the problem with this topic or this idea is that people mistaken Aikido in the, t in the context of religion and spirituality. Okay. Right? So, like... So, some people think Aikido is, is, is an actual religion or they mistake it for a religion? No, they mistake the concept of spirituality for religion. Oh, I see. Yeah. And they mistake... Because uh, they're not the same thing. They are not. So how would you define a religion? So in this framework, in your mind, what, what differentiates spirituality from a religion? Well, in uh, the Dalai Lama's book, Ethics for a New Millennium, he says, like, you can, be re you can be spiritual but not religious, but you can't be religious and not spiritual. spiritual. Right? So spirituality is kind of this of earth thing, right? That you, you, are, you are here on earth, in, in, the, in the presence of mankind, using religion as a vehicle to, Advance. for self-improvement, but also in a way to discipline yourself. Now, when you say that, uh, are you specifically thinking that that correlates to the, the structure of philosophy inside Aikido uh, with respect to um, spirituality in the sense that the spiritual connect the, the real work that's being done in Aikido from a spiritual sense is self improvement or advancement of the spirit. Well, so like <clears throat> today, uh, this idea of religion is kind of falling out of favor. So then, you don't the religion are the rules which govern how you live your life. Okay. Right, and so that's where you kind of that's where Aikido kind of bleeds over into this idea of like religion. But it's not. Right. It's not because it's Japanese, right? And then we're not talking about the context of God and Christianity in the West. Right. So if you think about this idea of, <clears throat> of Aikido as a spiritual vehicle, right, and the rules, then you can kind of see where it bleeds over. It's right. a, it's it's could be a religion, but it's not, right? So if you think about these, so because uh, is is the right word secular? Secular, secular means, means yeah, religion. Secular, uh, physical, normal, uh, non-religious, non-religious, non secular. It's the opposite of religion. Would be so secular. yeah, so like this, this idea of the secular person doesn't uh, follow a religion. So then they just go all crazy. So if you look at the world today, because people have stepped away from religion for the most part, they then they act any way they want to. You mean they have no boundaries on their ethical and moral um, thought. Right. They, they just are selfish. Right. And so, you, if you think of this idea of that, so what has replaced religion? Today, what's replaced religion is this idea, um, pseudo -sci science and pseudoscience. And I say okay. pseudoscience because you have this person which takes this study and then uses that as a tenant for their life. Okay. So, like you say, oh, um, Christianity says that thou shalt not kill. Well, I don't, I'm not, I don't believe in religion. But I read a study that said if you kill people, that it's bad for your happiness. Okay. So that's why I don't kill people. So it's the justification. Right. So on a certain level, religion was a th the religion explained the natural phenomena that science is now explaining. Explaining. 
So if you say, thou shall not kill, you think, oh, don't kill people because it's bad. But then they don't go into it. Like it hurts your psyche. It hurts your, your, your confidence. It gives you PTSD and all these things. But then science says, oh, you shouldn't kill people because based on a 2017 study of 553 people killing people, it was the cause of their unhappiness. And you go, oh, yeah, we shouldn't kill people based on this 2017 um, you know, meta-analysis of you know, this, that, and the other thing. But isn't, isn't what the Dalai Lama was saying in the quote that you spoke about just briefly ago, isn't, isn't it, I think isn't he trying to get at the idea that um, there is a way to define moral action without being in the system, the system of thought of a religion? Well, but that's where you have to back this thing out, right? So Aikido at its core is a martial art. Sorry. Not a philosophy. It, well, it is. But the thing is that it's like, it's like wearing yoga pants. Okay. You're wearing yoga pants, but you have no yoga practice. So by wearing yoga pants, you're a yogi. You follow the way of yoga. You, no, none of those things. It's just a, a piece of clothing that you're wearing, which makes your body look a little bit nicer. Right. Right. So this idea that Aikido, you have to be in Aikido and doing Aikido and it, to extrapolate the philosophy and then use that philosophy toward a betterment of your life. But if you don't do Aikido or you don't train in Aikido, it's very hard to just go, oh, oh Sensei said, once said. Although when I was preparing for today, one of the things that I noticed that kept coming up in my notes was um, there, is, there is a connection to a certain type of religion in Aikido, or at least some of Osensei's thought with Omotokyo. Um, I mean, there is, but if you think about it, that Omotokyo is hidden deep within the, the, practice. I, the practice of Aikido. And what we understand as Omotokyo and religion and Aikido is, they may not be what we think they are. Okay. So unpack that. Unpack a that. person who, who um, translates Osensei's teachings, words, journals, writings, right. or whatever you do, they have to have Osensei's background to understand. To understand that. And supposedly Osensei studied Christianity, um, Islamic religions, um, Buddhism, Shinto, right. all these things. And then created this idea of Aikido as he followed Omotokyo, right? So if we say like Aikido is Omotokyo, right? Then you're, then you, then you, if you look at all around, there is no Omotokyo in Aikido. Right, you don't see it. No, you, you don't see uh, Aikido at these Omotokyo temples. You don't see Aiki, you don't see Omotokyo at Homo Dojo. You don't see little talismans or all the things of Omotokyo. You, you don't see Doshu on New Year's Eve, going to a Motokyo temple. And, and doing some and, kind of proto Shinto. Yeah, no. So, and so if, if, if you even look at this idea of Shinto influence, we don't clap right. in, in, our, in our bowing, but other, other Aikido we dojos do. do. We only clap during our warm-up. If you go to Homo Dojo, no clapping at all. What is, what is the spiritual content of the clapping? For people who want to know what that means, what does it the, generally mean? The awakening of the deity and the dispelling of negative energy. Nice. So it's a um, purification. Right. Yeah. So I, when I was looking at some of the background on Omotokyo, um, I ran into this discussion of three things, which I thought you might be able to show the connection between Omotokyo and Aikido without us being overwhelmed by Omotokyo. And um, they talk about the ways to reach God, which we don't necessarily talk about in Aikido, but... I, there were these three things which I thought were super interesting and have direct relationship to Aikido. The first one was the body of God should be known through observation of the truth of the universe. That's the first one. The second one, which seems very connected to Aikido, is the force of God should be known through preciseness of motions of everything, which I, well, I'm interested to hear what you say. And then the last one was the spirit of God should be known through the recognition of the souls of persons. Right, and then you ask yourself, what does that mean? Right. But the one that I thought was most, well, the, the last two to me I wanted to ask you about, like, do you think that there's a connection through O Sensei and this idea that Moto Kyo talks about the motion of beings and souls and, and physical world um, to have it to how O Sensei um, intertwined his religious concepts with the practice of a martial art? 
Well, but if you think about it, did Osense intertwine Aikido with religious practices? Well, the only part that I, th I mean, never having met Osensei, obviously, I'm too young and I wasn't in Japan at the time, but um, the time, the only place where I see it, it seems to be when he's doing, um, you know, certain purification movements. When he the, is doing. Right. But we are not going not like this that. with the Shinto uh, and the staff jar. and the, all the, the uh, shide hanging off of it, right? We are not doing all these things. We are only seeing this moment where we go, oh, look at oh, since you're doing the perf purification ritual. Right. Right. You don't see it like, oh, that's what he does every morning or that's what he does every night. All these different things. So purification, my understanding of purification coming from a non-Shinto background is it's like the preparation of the soul to advance further in, in and, and being clear, like you use mm -hmm. the purification to clear the space, whether it's your mental space, your soul space, the physical space. It's a, it's a, I mean, all religions have purification rituals. Um, right, but what do, if we take one step away from that, what are we saying? We're saying that we need to act in a just way. Yeah. Cleaning up is just, not killing other people is just, doing all these things is just. So we talk about this idea of motion right? Motion is just movement, your daily movements. To get out of bed, you must move. Right. To go to the bathroom, you must move. Right. You move your bowels, right. right? You move food into your mouth. So this idea of, of right motion, right? So like some of that what you're talking about is like cluttered in jargon and Doctrine. words, right? So if you really took it apart, motion is just how you live your, how you move through your daily is life. It, is it also energy? Well, it takes energy to move from right. A to B, right? Your mind uses key energy, which is this energy, to, uh, to masticate and eat food right. and to digest it. It takes quote-unquote energy for you to get up and turn off, turn off the TV, or maybe use a controller today, creates, uh, requires energy, right? The only people who do not have energy are dead people. Are dead people, yeah. right? And so right, right movement, right? The correct movement of putting food in your mouth, the correct food that you're going to, the correct cultivation of food, the, the correct way you treat your neighbor, your friends, your family, your coworkers, your opponents, correct motion. And what was the second one? So the, se the third one, we, we, you talked about the second one. The third one was the spirit of God should be known through the recognition of individual souls. So through people. Well, so through people, but if you think about this idea of this Indian philosophy, the Ahimsa, right, that we are all but one, right, right, and because we are one, I must recognize you and not destroy you, because to, to destroy you, you destroy yourself. is to destroy myself because we are one, right, there, there is only one key in the universe, right, and different gradations of that key supposedly, but there's only one key, so your suffering is my suffering. Your destruction is my destruction. So there's there's built into this system, if you take it out to its logical conclusion, that uh, empathy and um, understanding the other person is, is also the way to understand yourself. Right, because there is no other. The right. other does not exist. I am that. So what? So so you're so you're teaching or you're practicing or doing both. Um, what are the things that? From your experience as a, being in Aikido over 30 years now. Yeah, um, in, in two months, it'll be 33 years. Wow. That's incredible. So what, are, what, are your, what has your experience been? What are the things that are hard to overcome during Aikido practice to get clear so that, that you're open to moral connection? So if this idea that Aikido not being a religion, the, the principles of nonviolence are hidden in the movements of Aikido. Right, so in Ikkyo, you can just break their arm. Right, right. In in Shihonage, you can just break their shoulder, arm, and head in one move. But the way I, uh, Osensei designed the movement, he kind of took out some of those things, so that you you would you moved the 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 movement of your body creates the movement of your mind. Mm. So the movement of your mind creates movement of the body. So it creates this cycle. So because you are moving in a nonviolent way, it's supposed to create nonviolence within you. But how long does that take? 
it takes a long time because first you got to learn the movements. Right. Which so you themselves go, have some violence in them. Right. So you go, I could just attemi them here. I could just gouge out their eyes right here, but I choose not to. Right. And by choosing not to, you are refraining from violence. So you're creating this idea, this cycle of nonviolence. So what if, what if you, so the, to create this cycle of nonviolence, um, you know, again, kind of like looking back on your own personal experience, do you remember any any events, incidents, times in class or outside class where you you were trying to get to that moral level uh, or ethical level, but you got pulled back oh, to yeah. violence or some other things? So there was a time where I got kicked out for being too violent in Aikido, too rough, too violent. And were you upset at first? When I got kicked out? Yeah. Um, it wasn't that I got, I was upset. That uh, that I was just more like, because Sensei was always mean to me, and yeah. so I was like, I'm just being mean back to you guys, right? Right, and so um, they kicked me out. They asked me to come back, so I come back, and then like maybe a couple, maybe not even months. six months later, Sensei calls me to the office and he goes, "There's a guy coming from Japan, and he's using my name all over the world." Inappropriately. Inappropriate. No, he's like, I don't without know. Without authorization. Like, without authorization. Right. And I need him not to come back. <laughs> and I go, what does that mean? He said, I need you to make Eat sure he doesn't. No, he said, I need you to make sure he doesn't come back. And I said, I don't understand what you're saying. He said, feel free to be yourself. Mm, interesting. So I went off on these three people. It was a sensei, the sensei's deshi, and like... Um, another young person. And I, every technique, I reversed one of them, whoever I was working with. Every technique, I was like, you know, like Ushirawaza, I would attack, they would leave their back open, I would just choke them. Oh. When, they, when it came time to throw them, Nagewaza, I, always, I body slammed them. When it came time to do um, like Ikkyo Nika Sankyonkyo or some joint lock, I cranked and it. And how did, how did you feel inside... <clears throat> At the end of that class. Well, in the middle, I was killing these, these three yeah. people. Just kill them. He says, are you Furuya Sensei's son? And I go, no. Yeah. And then, I mean, I I, I was so bad. You murdering them. I murdered these three people. Yeah. That on the drive home, I said to myself, oh, I think I went too far. Mm. The next day, I show up at the dojo, you know, sheepishly like, you know, I think I'm going to get in trouble because I went, I mean, you I went, went off overboard yeah right like <clears throat> and i walk in and i go hey mark where's sensei at and he said oh sensei's out and i go do you say anything about those people yesterday he goes what do you mean you know those those visitors we had right. he goes oh yeah those weren't the people he thought they were <laughs> shoot <laughs> oh no and then in that moment i said sensei's wrong yeah because he knows he he chastises me and knows that i have a problem with anger management so you can't just set me on people. Right. It's dangerous. I, I can't take you drinking knowing that you have a drinking problem. Just have one or two just so right. I can have fun. Right. And it's bad. It's wrong. And so, I mean, I felt I was all mad at Sensei after that. But, I mean, when I was driving home after doing it. You felt bad. I went, no, it's not, well, I mean, I felt bad. But I was like, I went overboard. Right. I mean, I, if, it, if, we take, if we look at it in terms of drinking, I blacked out drunk so that, on them. So that, in a sense, that's what ethical rules are for, is to keep you from teeing off. In, yeah. in this particular situation, like on violence, like if, you, if, we, if we let ourselves drink from the violent, you know, drug. Right. And so Aikido, when you kind of like take it down to its more primal level, it's so effective. It's so devastating. But the thing is, once I let you drink from that and it's effective, you will never leave that. Because it's addictive. Right. I mean, Bill, these three people, one was a Shihan oh, and his Deshi. And he was, he was, the Deshi wasn't a small dude, wasn't yeah. an old man. He was a young strapping dude. And I mean, I was picking him up and body slamming him. I choked him almost unconscious in a Shiwaza. Was Furi Sensei teaching that class? No. Someone else is teaching. Oh, someone else is teaching. Do you think it would have been different if he had been there? Well, he probably, maybe he would have said, hey, 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 hey. Tone it down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there were times like in Shihonaga, I swept the guy's leg as I was smashing their head on the ground. You know? I mean, I was, I was so, in Japanese, they call it saki, 
bloodlust. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, going crazy. To the point where the last 10 minutes of the class, they just, the three of them just trained by themselves. Really? Yeah, wouldn't even train with me. And then I'm laughing, ha, 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 wimps. And then, hey, it's not even them. Oh, damn it. And then I, I am fear the day. They were Japanese. I fear the day that I go to Japan and, and someone goes, it. you remember me? And I go, ha, huh? Yeah. I was in a bad place. Yeah. I don't, don't think you please don't, you know, because I you someday you may have to you never know. You may have to own up to the thing, the crime you that committed. you did. Yeah. So you go, oh man, I hope that never happens. What do you think is the separate from Amonto Kyo, which we started talking about, which is a very complex body of religious thought? Well, it's kind of a, a beef stew of, of oh, religions. I like this and I kind of like that and I kind of yeah. like this. Um, what do you think is the, 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 I mean, people talk about Aikido being nonviolent, but w is that the, the prime, the prime directive of Aikido? Of Aikido or? Of, of Aikido, yeah. No, the, the, that isn't. So you see, that, that's the thing is that the. Because a lot of people think that, right? They get, they get attracted to Aikido. Like I've had these conversations with friends of mine that know I've done Aikido for a very long time. And they're always like, you know, Bill, we really admire the fact that you're nonviolent. And I'm like. Okay. If you only know, I would just bite your nose <laughs> Seriously off. Seriously violent now. person. But I mean, is that is I mean that is sold as the prime directive of, of Aikido, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. And so, but it's but who created that idea? Who I don't know. The people who translated Osensei's uh, writings, teachings, journals, and whatnot from a Western point of view. From a Western point of view, that's what they say it is. And it, 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 and it might be, right? Right, It might be. But those are just snapshots in a moment of someone's writing it down. And you Over go, many oh. years. You go, oh, pizza, eggs, churro, you know, oh, yeah, that's, what, that's how you make a sandwich. Right. Right? And then everyone's making a sandwich out of this thing. But what, what do I know today? As after, having been doing Aikido for 33 years, what do I know today? I understand today that violence is not necessary for one, but also it's bad because the way I learned, the way I learned this whole idea, I always understood it intellectually, mm -hmm. but the way I, I came to understand it in you my heart it. was that when I had a child and my son was a little baby, I looked at him and I said, I would just die if someone harmed him. Yeah. And then I realized everybody is somebody's baby. Right. And so thus, if I don't want it done to me, I should not do it to others. And thus, the idea of nonviolence, violence is wrong. But, you know, our egos want that. Our egos want to get sand kicked in our face, stand up and destroy that person. And everybody goes, you're so great. You know, you walk into a place and then the bikers walk away from you. You walk into a place and the gangbangers run away from you. But those are just movies. What really kind of happens in our heart, and this is where this idea of spirituality comes in, is that what is at the core of your heart? What is authentic to you? Right. Violence is not an authentic gesture. You know, you watch like MMA and talk, listen to Dana White talk. Violence is in our DNA. It's not that it's in our DNA. It is a primal expression, right? We don't go, oh, 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 anymore, right? right? Because we have sophisticatedly developed language. But if we say, oh, yeah, violence is in our DNA, Dana White say, oh, violence is in our DNA. And he showed that when he slapped his wife just the other day. Violence is not in our DNA. It's a primal expression. But just like we don't go poo-poo in the bushes anymore, we, don't, we have sophisticated... Um, avenues for that. We go into the bathroom, we have toilet paper. Right. But because we think as, because uh, we're still primal primal beings, right. we think, oh yeah, violence is in our DNA. So then let's just gouge out some people's eyes. But the world is violent. It is violent because we we have not yet graduated to a place where we we come to accept compassion, empathy, peace, and all those different things. Right? Like today, we don't steal from each other. But in the old days, people did. Right. Right. People still do, but when they get caught, they're, they're punished. They're in big trouble. Right. Yeah. We don't. What are the tenets of religions? Right. Don't cheat on your your spouse. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. But well, we don't cheat on other people because we're trying to create a harmonious 
society. And if I allow you to cheat on your wife by stealing my wife and all these different things, we should probably stop doing that as sophisticated human beings. I, I mean, I think that's an interesting argument or an interesting proposition. But the thing that immediately came to my mind was, you know, when we were students of Furu Sensei, and then later, when now that you're the instructor, um, this dojo, compared to a lot of other dojos, doesn't really talk about philosophy very much. It's very much not discussed. And the f interesting thing about that is that Furu Sensei is a Buddhist priest, right? right? He's uh, very well read. He's been he was doing he had been done doing martial arts for Decades. forty eight years when he died, yeah. right or so, and he's not talking about um, philosophy. Philosophy, because in the beginning, it's just a martial art, and then because it's a martial art, you need to learn how to move it and do it before you can kind of start talking about these higher, deeper philosophies. You learn how to kill so you realize that killing is bad. bad. Yeah. And that, but that, I think, is a... I think people that come here from other dojos, sometimes other dojos where, they're, where they talk about it more, they seem very, like, shocked. That, uh, and I'm not saying we're better than anyone, but it's just... It's interesting because it, it, it really is... You know, unless it's like in informal conversations or occasionally like after at the end of class, you might say something and you'll throw a little bit in there. But it's still very much um, that the path of Aikido is so long that even that itself could take up most of your spiritual energy. Well, because how long does change take? So the reason why at the end of the class, I always say something about like not being such a jerk about in life is so that you could create a container. Okay. So the class is supposed to be very vigorous and everybody's supposed to be training hard. They're supposed to be training like a martial art. And then that vigorousness has to be channeled, right? So that at the end I go, that's all great and all, but look, you guys got to be nicer people. Right. And then you go, what? So this is what happens. You go, what? Bullshit. What? What? No way. <laughs> what? No way. And then something happens and you go, oh, oh that's what he means. Ah, uh, yeah. So is, is practice like a preparation for um, a realization? On a certain level, yes. Yeah. Because you're, you're working with this person who you know is, let's just say like we have a student who's, who's um, blind. Right. He's blind. You just punch his ticket. But then you see him like crying in the corner or you see him bleeding or you, you just look at him and you go, He's all haggard because you just you worked him over, and you too think, much. "Gosh, that's too much." And then you have a change of heart, and then but it takes that time where you have to rough that person up before you can go, "Oh, I shouldn't do that," right? right? Because you don't know any better because it's still Aikido is still primal to you. But then once or then it happens to you. Someone chokes you. Someone cranks your wrist so badly that you go, I would never do that to someone else. And then when you go to do it to someone else, you go, oh, this right. is bad. I shouldn't do that. Because this isn't a religion, and there's no, like most religions have like patriarchs or leaders. Um, how does one get the guidance at a very high level? Like how do you get the guidance for yourself? Well, you get the guidance. Life teach. you use the... The understandings you have of tra from training and maybe some cr stuff you pick up here and there, you hear a word like, I used to really be into Buddhism, mm -hmm. but I'm not so much anymore because my acupuncture teacher turned me on to some like um, Indian stuff. And then when I read that, I went, oh yeah, totally, man. Yeah. You know, and so you, you, you kind of like, life starts to become your dojo because you learned how to learn you learn how to be observant. You learn how to be aware that now when you take that, those things out in the real world, you immediately see suffering. You immediately see injustice. When before you'd be like, get a job, bum. Right. But then now you realize it's more, it's, it's more difficult than that. There's so many, so many social factors which cause this person to become homeless. And then you think, gosh, I'm... You know, like they say, every every person is five meals away from being um, uh, uh, um, hungry. Hungry. Yeah. Right. You think, you know, 
so, some people are three paychecks. Or, there's some, some metric they have which is like five paychecks from being homeless. And you think, shoot, that could be me? That's not that far. That's not that far. So you're, huh, get a job, bum, softens. And you go, I mean, you may not help them because it's not your thing, but you don't, you don't have contempt for them anymore. Right, you're not angry at them. Like they talk about this idea that the person who has the ability to face you on the battlefield as your equal, what it took for them to get th there is the same thing that it took for you to get here. So you shouldn't have contempt for them because they are no different from you. They are just on the other side of the line, the other side of the battlefield. So that's where this idea of you should love your enemy comes. And that's where like people don't understand when, when the Japanese prime minister goes to, um, what temple is that? Um, and, and, you know, uh, makes offerings, makes offerings to the war dead. They go, ah, oh, the, he's, uh, he's a right winger. He's a right winger and all these things. But, but if you look backwards into this idea from the samurai lifestyle, you honor your, your foe. Right. Because your foe is no different than you. You were the lucky one and won. Right. They are the unlucky one and died, but you are one and the same. Like if you look at, we ever watched the movie Hard Boiled oh, with, sure. with um, uh, John Woo, the bad guy, you know, the guy with the eye patch, mm -hmm. you know, he's having it out with, uh, te not Tequila, um, John, uh, Tony Leung's character. And then. The, the other guys come in and like try to kill the people and he gets all mad and he kills his own men because they were acting unjustly. Right. Immorally. Immorally. And so there's, th there's this idea that, look, you and I are the equal. We are the same. We're just on opposite sides of the battlefield. So you, you've, you're a Chinese medicine doctor. You studied different religions. Um, like the, the sort of like coming to the near the end of our podcast, I kind of wanted to shift a little bit what do you think is how Aikido ranks relatively to all these other systems as a um, as a methodology for becoming uh, more ethical? Well, but the thing is that all those things are supposed to make you more ethical. BJJ has no spiritual component, but it's supposed to still make you ethical, mm. right? It can. You just have to get past you. Have, every martial art, you have to get past the blood and gut stage. The beat em up stage, the I'm gonna go to a biker bar and use my martial arts stage. Cause you gotta get it out of your system. Cause you come there to find yourself and make yourself a better person. And sometimes doing that, you gotta break some eggs to make an omelet. Have you noticed, cause I think that's a really interesting idea, have you noticed um, as you become more ethical, have you noticed any changes in your body? Well, not not necessarily. Yeah. Right. But like, but as you get older, you just your can't lift up someone over your head. Right. You can't just sweep someone's leg. You do, then you're like, oh, my heel's all messed up. Right. My toe got broken. Right. And then, see, and that's where these things start to become more ethical because you go, I swept this person's leg, but then I jammed my toe so badly, I have trouble walking on the next right. day. And then the next time you go to do it, you go, I don't have time for this. Right. You know, like, um, maybe five or six years ago, I was doing kokidosa with this person from another dojo. And then the person like, like tried to do like this no touch thing to me. And then I jumped through that and scissored them and took them down from kokidosa in Seiza. Yeah. And it was a great move. Right. Except for I stubbed my toe, my big toe on you the way through, yourself. which took six months to subside. Which is so in a sense, like when I was asking, like you notice changes in your body, what it sounds like you're saying is if you do the wrong thing, um, sometimes um, you, the lesson you get is, is the self harm. Well, there's no free lunches. Right. Everything so has a cost. I stubbed my toe, which took six, took six months. To and as a pain specialist, it took me six months to rectify. And then so now when I go to, if I were to go to do that, I go, eh, not worth, who really cares? Right. Uh, not really worth it. But in that moment, when I was pushing that person around the mat, I was like, I'm going to do this thing and so, embarrass him. So what do you say, if, if, if you say anything at all, when, when a, a prospective new student comes in and says, the thing that I'm attracted to about Aikido is it's, it's a pacifist martial art. It's an oxymoron. How do you respond to that student? Well, what I usually do is I try to, 
and this is the salesman in me from right. when I was a personal trainer and you had to learn salesmanship, is that whatever they told you, you would turn back on them and explain it in that way so that that gets, gets them to join. I don't do that anymore. Okay. But, I mean, I try to just explain it as a martial art first. Right. Then it becomes a more philosophical vehicle later. But and you got to put the time spiritual. in. Yeah. Yeah. You're not yielding, you know, all this different type of stuff. But, but, but the experience that Aikido is generally a one-on-one, -on -one, it's taught one-on-one, -on -one, even though it's a multiple-person art, the primary methodology is the interaction between Nage and Uke. Right, because if you think about this idea that's, I guess, supposedly O-sensei said, you have never seen my real Aikido. And everybody goes, see, second dose is not doing his real Aikido. Right. Oh, yeah, maybe. I mean, you never know, right? But then, you know, what it was the real original Japanese that the person said that he said that he said. Or you could think about it in a different way, right? Because you could do it any way we want. What if you, O oh, Sensei means you have never seen my real Aikido because you have never seen, there are no videos of O oh, Sensei taking Ukemi. Oh, wow. Really? And if, and the true compassion is to take another's Ukemi. Right. Because you are giving Yourself. your body to them. Right. To, as a vehicle. But, but did he take Ukemi? He had to have over the years. At some point. Yeah. Right? But the point is, you, know, you have never seen my real Aikido, because maybe his real Aikido is in, is in the Ukemi. Yeah. So that's why it takes two people. Then when, when a person um, searches Aikido on YouTube, they just see people throwing. They don't see the Their other mind half. doesn't even see the, the other person falling down. And they never think that they're going to have to take the ukemi. So when they've come in and you go, all right, now it's time for you to be thrown, they go, whoa, what? Yeah. And some people don't like to be thrown. Right. Yeah. Is, it, is, that, is that the hardest transition from physical to spiritual or, or philosophical is the role? I mean, it seems like traditional jujitsu teachers did take ukemi. The old Koryu. In, well, in all martial arts, it's supposed to be that the high ranking person takes, takes the ukemi. ukemi. Is, but is that, is, is that like the trying to sum up how Aikido relates to spirituality? Is that the real uniqueness of Aikido versus other martial arts? How it co opted this Koryu sort of style of. No, the real uniqueness is that O Sensei took away the thing that everybody wants. Which is what? Competition. Competition. Because if I could defeat all of you, I and am better. the best in the whole wide world. And then I went home and beat up my wife. Right. Right? So you took away co competition because competition creates the worst part of you. You will cheat. You will do anything you can to win. To win. Yeah. Right? And that anything you can to win, you overlook the other and the compassion, the desire to destroy other people so for your own benefit. So when Osente wisely took that away, he for lack of a better term, kicked all these people in the nuts. Right. Because now they can't go, I have 33 championships. I, you know, like how many world, uh, world grand champions are there in Taekwondo? There's like 5,000 of them, right? Because right. every person is a grand champion. But, you, but that's the thing. When O Sensei took that away, he, he took away their ability to show off, to be selfish, to be, be egotistical. egotistical. Yeah. And then that's, on a certain level, that's what hurts Aikido. But the thing is, if you're smarter, you will realize there is no, that competition is empty. Destroying other people is empty. Because from a spiritual standpoint, those things are wrong. So do you think, like, kind of trying to like pull this all together at the end, do you think Aikido is... Uh, the way Aikido, and I say broadly Aikido, all Aikido now out there, do you think that we're in danger of losing that insight or are we really working towards building these insights into bigger ethical victories? Well, the people who, like I hear some people in Europe are trying to make Aikido a competition. Right. Tomiki makes it a competition. The people who are adding other martial arts to Aikido, you can, you can do whatever you want, man. Aikido, right. The greatest thing about Aikido is you can do whatever you want. The worst thing about Aikido, you can, you can do, do whatever, whatever you want. You want. But the thing is, you run the risk of adding back in that thing that he took out, that Osente took away because he's trying to help you get rid of that thing. So you're, you're, you got diabetes. I took all the sugar out of your house, but then I give you candy bars every <laughs> once in a while. No, like that's this idea that 
he understands that competition is not good for your soul. And the longer, see, look, look at basketball. Look at all these different martial arts that have competition. The, the practitioner retires at a certain point. Right, because they can't win. Well, they can't win. They can't be competitive. Right. It doesn't feed their ego. In martial art, in Aikido, there There's is no, no retiring. retiring. Right, there's no retiring. You train until you can no longer train. Right, and then you keep training. Well, then, you, then it becomes all mental. Right. Because really, if you think about it from this idea of like um, meditation, all of this stuff is, is designed to help you cope with the very last challenge of your life. Which is dying. Which is death. Right. Die, death and dying. Right? Because you have to learn to give up certain things of your ego in order to transition into, into the next life untethered and unencumbered by things. Right. So if I allow you to compete, you're, you're holding on, on to you're those egotistical on. things. Yeah. And then Aikido is, or martial arts is not a, a self-improvement pursuit, but a way to feed your ego. Right. Why you're does, losing the ethical component. Yeah. Why do Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and those people still make movies? Most of those movies suck, yeah. but they can't let go of that. Yeah. They can't let go of the money. They can't let go of the fame. They can't let go of these things, which are all, all egotistical. So if, if you had one final insight as a, someone who's been a student for decades, someone who's been a teacher for decades, um, trying to find the ethical path, um, if we were looking at the person that's just starting Aikido, what would your insight be? If you, if you were going to give them insight, maybe you won't. Well, the thing is that Aikido is not a religion. Osensei is not a god. The teacher, me or other people, are not gurus. The dojo is not a church or a temple. The thing which saves people is the movement, mm -hmm. right? The movement, and then that creates this idea, understanding of spirituality. The spirituality aspects come from the movement because in order to get good and keep going and persevere, you need this spiritual strength. Right. And with every adversity you overcome, you build more perseverance, right? Since it, for instance, they call it spiritual capital. And that spiritual capital is ephemeral. It goes away Very faster fast. than it comes. But the more you feed into the spiritual capital, that's the, the spirituality is what gets you to crawl up the side of the mountain when your car's flipped over five right. times so that you can save your family who are, who are dying in the car. Right. Winning gold medals will not enable you to crawl up that mountain. You might, but what? But the spirituality which caused you be, to become good at a martial arts and maybe win gold medals, that perseverance, dedication, persistence, right? Overcoming adversity, those spiritual elements, it's what enables you to crawl up the side of that ravine and get help, right? So Aikido is not a religion, but the things that it teaches you are spiritual. Right. Because it's not about smashing someone to the ground with Iriminage. It's about the perseverance to become good at smashing people down with Iriminage. Right. Which and is then, a distinction. And then the compassion and, um, you know, restraint that comes from training, is that is, the, that is the true spirituality. Because anyone can pull the trigger of a gun. Right. Anyone can kick somebody in the face. But not everyone can restrain themselves right. and to restrain yourself you need to have a strong spiritual background well i think that's a a very strong position to stop on this has been a uh we've gone through this pretty deeply well thank you for watching or listening uh don't forget to like or subscribe to this podcast thank you very much thank you very much